November 13th of 2023. This is the Stoughton Plan Commission meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum and we are in certification of open meeting laws. Uh, the first item of business would be approval of the minutes from October 9th. I would entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Motion by Schumacher, second by Bradford. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Next would be the City Council Representative Report. And just very briefly, at the October 24th Council meeting, R164 of 2023 was postponed, and R165 2023 was passed. All right, thank you. And next would be the uh, staff report. The only item that I really wanted to highlight is the gingerbread house on Williams Drive. Actually, we're doing some final inspections for occupancy this week there. So that, that's quite an impressive building and project if you've had an opportunity to drive by there. Um, pavement was put down a few weeks ago and it's really come together nicely. I walked the dogs past there uh, maybe a week ago or so and it was, uh, yeah, impressive structure, looks really nice. Yep. Can't wait to see it opened. All right, any questions on the staff report? Hearing none, we'll go to the final condominium plat for lot 6 and lot 51 of 51 West subdivision. This one we will be looking for a recommendation from the city council, and I can pull this one up for you. And uh, Director Shield. Yeah. This is actually a pretty straightforward, maybe if you scroll down to like page five of this, I think there's a, the actual plat. This one? It's pretty straightforward, lot six of the 51 West development. You'll recall we we did the rezoning, uh, part of a PD. Um, we actually had a preliminary plat that was approved with this layout. Now they've brought the, con the final condominium plat back before us. Um, there's no um, extra conditions that we've identified as being appropriate to include. Um, th this project moves forward. There's actually four buildings already under construction in the western edge of this site. Motion by Bradford to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Schumacher. Any questions on the resolution? All the person or <coughs> Commissioner Farrell. Not really a question, just a, a quick comment. Probably not totally germane, but I went out there the other day during the week, during a weekday, middle of the day, Oak Opening Drive is becoming a uh, major shortcut, it appears, for what that's worth. Lots of traffic zooming down there. I was like, where are these people coming from? Which way are they headed? They were coming from Rutland, heading into town somewhere. But I was only there for like five minutes and saw at least half a dozen cars, uh, you know, zooming down the road. So, yeah, I don't think that was that was certainly expected. It's a parallel route to 51. It's kind of a back way to get into the commercial center from the rural area. Um, so I think it keeps some traffic off of 51. Um, we recognize we put in some traffic calming um, islands or medians in that roadway, but the, also the improvements that we made to the town portions of Oak Opening and Deer Point. Um, made it more attractive. <laughs> when that was bumpy and uh, full of holes, it wasn't as, as attractive as a route. Now, it's, now it certainly is. All right, I'll uh, mention that uh, public safety. I think we have a meeting, I think it's later on this week or next week. Um, any other questions or comments on the, um, on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Uh, next item is the site plan review for the solar array at United Methodist Church at 525 Lincoln Avenue. I can pull that up for you, maybe, here the, we go. The seventh page provides at least an overview of the site. Uh, next one, I think, right there. Oh. Um, so, so this is actually, uh, I, I think it's a pretty exciting project for the United, United Methodist Church, which is across from the high school. Um, this facility is proposing to put in a solar array, a ground freestanding one, 
so it's not on the on the building. And you can see on the site plan where it's positioned or proposed to be located. Um, we didn't identify any challenges with any of the, the siting or regulation related items and therefore the resolution is written to support approval of it. All right, any questions or comments on this one? Commissioner Farrell? Yes, sir. Um, is this one where it would have gone out to the people living nearby also? Or not? W would this, this have been directly notified to the adjacent residents? Is yes. that the question? The answer is no. Okay. Because it's not a rezoning or a conditional use. When, we're, when there isn't a public hearing, there isn't a, an explicit requirement to distribute the notice or the hearing information to adjacent property owners. Obviously, it's posted and, and the like as an open meeting, but not directly mailed. Okay. Because uh, I, I didn't get a chance to get out there. I'm not really all that familiar with it. There, there are some houses, I think, to the south. Yeah, Greenspire is a multifamily uh, complex, somewhat owned by the city. <laughs> um, managed Greenspire. through Greenspire. Yeah, we'll yeah. probably be putting our own on Greenspire. The way it sounds, There's right. okay. we received notification of, a, of an award, so you'll be hearing more about that one. And I believe the actual house just to the east is shown on the, the illustration here in the corner. I believe that's actually owned or managed by by the church as well. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about the house is more to the south. Looks like there's there's a couple, and I was wondering about reflective off of this, if any, into those houses. I'm not familiar with any regulations that we have locally that would address that concern from a solar array right or allow for extra consideration related to that okay the worst house would actually be the parsonage because as the, the sun is going up and over the property so your reflection is probably going to be at the parsonage house going to go to the east oh, okay yep all right thank you sure any other questions or comments on this one um, otherwise, we do have a resolution where uh, we're seeking a site plan uh, approval on this one. So this one is pretty much up to you. This one would not go to City Council. That's correct. I'll move to approve. Motion by Caravello. Is there a second? Second by Bradford. Um, one last opportunity for questions or comments. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Um, I think I want to skip to number 10. Is that okay? That's fine. Let's do that. We'll, we'll go to number 10, and that's a zoning ordinance amendment request for section 78-206, parent 4, parent G, related to the in-vehicle sales and service uses. Uh, Director Scheel. I believe in your packet is included an email we received from the, app, the original applicant indicating their desire to withdraw the, the zoning amendment request. Um, Attorney Dregney's here, but, but as we understand it right now, it was postponed by the Plan Commission at the last meeting, so it's essentially in the hands of the Plan Commission to consider how to move forward. Um, but that's the extent of the information that we have related to the, the request to withdraw. Attorney Dragney, anything you want to add to that as long as you're here? You can push the there. Yeah, I have reviewed the ordinance um, that addresses this type of application and what the Plan Commission's options are at this stage of the process. I think you have uh, a wide range of options. You could uh, choose to, given that the applicant has requested that it be withdrawn or has indicated a withdrawal of the application you could choose to take no further action on it I don't believe there was an actually a motion to approve pending I think the so there's no pending motion at the last meeting basically you took action to require that this matter be put on the next agenda so that you, you could give create some time for uh, yourselves and I think the applicants to maybe provide some additional information so there's no motion pending. So you could take no action, um, or you could choose to proceed to either recommend 
um, that the ordinance be approved or not approved um, and ask that that recommendation be forwarded to the city council. Um, but the way the ordinance is drafted, it doesn't say that you are required to do any one of those things. It says that you may, um, you may, uh, what does it say? <laughs> it says uh, you, <coughs> you may make a report to the Common Council and you may state in the minutes your findings and recommendation regarding the application. So it doesn't say you're required to. Uh, so it's up to you uh, at this stage to decide how you want to proceed. So I assume that if we wanted to proceed to take action on it, we'd have a motion. And what would we do if we wanted to take no action? Just there would uh, be no motion. There would be no it? motion. You could call for is there, is there is you could ask uh, whether anyone has a motion. Could be a motion to approve, motion to deny. Could be a motion to postpone it indefinitely, or could there could be silence. No one makes any motion. Okay. So I'll ask a question. What would you like to do? Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Farrell. Um, I think maybe rather than just leave, it, leave a blank out there for people to wonder what happened, maybe we should just make a report to council to say the applicant withdrew uh, his request and it will be taken up by the sustainability committee, to what I understand. Yeah, and, so and then therefore the planning commission is not going to take any further action at this point, something like that. I'll fill in some of the uh, in-between bits here. Um, I did have a meeting with the applicants. Um, I thought it was a fairly productive meeting that we had. Um, we discussed, you know, a lot, a lot of different things within that meeting, and I think that we decided that the best way to go about this would be to at least withdraw this from the plan commission consideration and retake it back up into the sustainability committee where they could work on some of the finer details a little bit more. Okay, so I guess my question would be is does this body have the authority to, to make that ask or does that just happen naturally and we're okay? Uh, I think the plan commission could. Uh, there could be a motion that you could vote on to recommend that the council refer this issue to the sustainability committee. You don't have to do that. You could do that. And then the council could choose to do that or not. Um, you're not actually making a recommendation on the ordinance itself. You're simply, the, I, I suppose, you again, you could do nothing and just, I don't know, Alder Schumacher, what your thinking is about how that would go to the sustainability committee. Um, well, I mean, that could just be an ask of the members or by the members of that committee or an ask to the chair of that committee in order to take up this this language and, and work it out a little bit more thoroughly. Are you thinking that the applicant would make that request or that the plan commission would or that the council, city council would? I'm thinking that the simplest way that that, that would be and at least the most expeditious way would probably be for the applicant themselves in order to make that request of the sustainability committee. I think we would tend to bog it down in uh, several more weeks in, in just talking about it when they could get on with it. So I think it, in this case the best is no motion and we just, we just let this, let it fall and then it gets taken back up uh, with the applicant in the sustainability committee. Yeah, I, I propose we take no action. I don't hear any objections to that, so I guess that's what we'll do. We'll just make no action on it. All right. Thanks for meeting with them. And yep, and I'm happy to work with them further on, on getting some of the getting the language worked out in there. Okay. So then. So we're not going to take any action, and we'll move on to item number nine, which is a site plan review for building demolition and new maintenance facility at 900 West Wilson Street for the Stone <coughs> Area School District. And we're gonna queue this up. Dr. Keezer's here, and I think he might have some guests online as well. And it looks like you have the red button push. The floor will be yours. 
Thank you and good evening. Um, I'm here back um, and thank you for having us back. Tonight I have our architect partners from EUA to talk through the um, maintenance, the Yahar building site and the new maintenance building. So I'll turn it over to Andre and McLean. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Andre Rossi. You might recall me from the last meeting. I also have McLean here on the call with me. I'm one of the architects on uh, the Stoughton renovation and referendum team here. So last time we were in front of you, we had River Bluff in the district office that was building one and two. Today we have the Yahara gym uh, addition or renovation and the maintenance building, which is a new build. This is just east of the current high school. Uh, on the, it says we're keeping the existing gym and we're essentially removing the building east of that and replacing it with a, a, the maintenance building there. So you can see on the site map. So we put together a similar package as, as we did last time with demolition plans, site plans. Here you can see that demo plan uh, in red is everything being removed from the site. Uh, further down, we get more into the details of the um, the pervious surfaces. It is quite the reduction of that. We can probably stay on this sheet for now, though, with the materials and get oh, to civil later. Nope. Okay. I'm sorry, Andre. I'll I'll slow I'll slow down. Let me know when you want me to advance. Sure. This this sheet is perfect. I think we'll actually do materials first, and then we can get into to civil. I, I rearranged the document based off of how our discussion went last time. But I think the short of it is we have more green space on the site than existed current uh, previously. So there in the upper left corner, you can see an image of the current connector from that Yahara gym to that existing school building. Through discussions with the district and the team, we're actually looking to remove that portion so that they're two standalone buildings. So the portion that is crossed out would be removed and we would go in with a storefront system uh, in the existing kind of portal into that gym. So very simple materials, we would have the brick existing is a red and orange brick. We would have a new clear anodized storefront system and then the red flashing cap. So building number three is, is very minimal work. We're essentially removing a portion of the building and um, kind of closing in that, that facade of the building. So then if we move to the next sheet down, we've got the maintenance building materials. So here we've got a architecturally ribbed uh, vertical metal panel and a standing seam roof with a lower base of, of brick that's meant to connect with the brick on the Yahara building to remain. So that brick uh, goes around the entire perimeter of the building. Uh, it's that similar red and orange brick. We did pick two metal panels uh, from their kind of more premium line of choices from this manufacturer. It's an architectural, they call it the A panel system and out of the good, better, best, it's their, their best version of panel. It has concealed fasteners, a wide range of selection for colors and, and finish. And then we have the clear anodized storefront system, kind of a silver window mullion, if you will, with a couple garage door overhead doors around the building that would be white. So you can see the different numbers on the screen there. Uh, then further through the packet, we have the floor plan on the next sheet. It's about 1700 square feet for the new maintenance building. It's composed of a, on the left side of the, you can see a dividing line in the middle there on grid seven. The left side is for vehicle storage that would be both inside and out on the surface parking lot. And then the east side of that building is their warehouse. So they would have racks within there with, with forklifts for that eastern portion. There's a loading dock on the right side that would be recessed uh, with the, the building grade on the outside. Then there's an office component to the southwest corner that has uh, three offices and kind of a large break room. On the next sheet, we have the roof plan. We do also have a PV array here 
we have planned for 1,600 square feet in that dark gray region there. That ended up being around a 30 kilowatt system, which should power both this building and the, the gym building. Even though it's, it's no longer attached, we plan to connect through to that building. Is that plan to go as part of phase one? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> then the next two sheets we have are the exterior elevations and the exterior wall sections to give you a look of, you can see the, the brick banding wrapping around the, the bottom uh, three foot portion just underneath the windows there. And then finally, the last series of about seven sheets or so are the civil site plans with our landscaping and demo. So here on this sheet with the purple are all the items to be removed. So there's a significant amount of, of parking and surface slot that's, that's being removed. We do have a diagram on sheet PC12 that shows the old and the new together so you can get an image of how we're improving upon the site there. So in, there we go right there. In teal is the <clears throat> planned grass area. In gray to the north of the red is old surface parking being removed. And the red on the screen is new or uh, previously existing uh, parking that will be maintained. So that came out to an impervious ratio for the whole lot of 0.2. And to the north of the site, there is a existing park uh, green space for the community that we plan to keep uh, on, on this property. I have a question about the parking. So I noticed when I drive by there in the summer and there's a softball diamond down there, I think it's uh, uh, the girls softball team. There's a lot of street parking there, which I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to get some of that off the street. I don't know if you've had that conversation internally or not, but it, it gets pretty messy down there during a the game. As far as from the existing lot, there we did not plan on it increasing par parking outside of, as you can see in the um, kind of upper right corner there we've taken that existing we've brought that down from the conversation it did not rise to something that um, reached us as far as an issue with the street parking yeah i mean i'm sure you know for the for the staff that's working in the maintenance building you have sufficient parking but when there's an event there i think that would be my concern it looks like you're reducing <coughs> parking is overall O overall, yes, yeah. and uh, and I would say f from the limited time that I had been on the core team from last spring, um, even in the discussion phase with our activities and athletic director, um, n no information came to us that there was concerns around the parking, uh, the street level parking that was there for activities and events. Yeah, I think that's something you might want to monitor next summer. Okay. Andre, are there different pages you'd like to highlight or talk about landscaping or um, civil work that might be yet to be designed? Yeah, if we pull up a couple, go back a couple sheets to the landscaping plan, I think PC10, yeah, right there. Uh, gives us a look of of the different site plantings that we have planned along the drive lands. We have various trees that we're adding along the drive to the east there, helping screen the residential area to the east. Uh, to the south, we are replacing a majority, essentially that whole parking lot um, at the bottom of the screen there. It'll be a single loaded parking lane split between maintenance and the gym, which allows us, you know, on weekends or heavy events where maintenance building may not be heavily used, that can split parking between the two. And 
as a whole, just kind of updating that whole parking area. Um, we have screening along the south of the building. We can see in the different mulch beds, and then we added a couple trees and mulchings around the existing uh, dumpster enclosure at the bottom left corner. Didn't currently have screening or planting. And then to the northwest corner behind the surface parking area in the upper left, we also have a mulch screening area. Can you speak to the fencing that's shown on the plan around that area? Yeah, so we do have a, a fence wrapping the perimeter plan to be future. It's not currently part of this scope. The owner intends to, to put it in at a later date, but shortly after moving, it would be similar to their current um, maintenance building, which is over by the River Bluff building. That location, it's a chain link fence. It did, didn't have vertical slats in that portion. Uh, we did have vertical slats planned at least for the connecting fence, which is between building three and four. Uh, that was mainly to screen the mechanical units behind it. Sure. And we were planning on a, a black powder coated fence, a slightly uh, an uptick from a kind of a silver chain link fence. And then there'd be a roller gate on the east side, eventually planned to uh, allowing access into the drive. Uh, this site plan also shows the, the loading dock in the lower right corner. We have it screened with plantings on both sides. That area is plan to be lower than the inside of the building, but the grade actually steps away from the building. So it's not a recessed pit loading dock, if you will. The grade slopes away from that towards, towards the street. And it helps kind of separate the, the vehicle traffic there from uh, loading delivery type activity and maintenance facility vehicles to the north of the site and students and visitor parking to the south. We're reusing the existing curb cuts that exist currently. I believe one item that came up in the letter was the width of those. We were planning on, on keeping what was maintaining the existing cuts. You can see there in, in dark uh, black lines is where we plan on updating the sidewalk and the drive lane. We did update some of the drive lanes to a six inch deep sidewalk at the request of the commission here. Is that shown on this plan, Andre? I'm not. That would be more on our civil plan, which is a couple sheets up. It's on PC8. Yep, right there. The leaders at the bottom of the image mentioned the uh, five inch wide, yeah, right there. Six inch through the sidewalk drive and concrete limit at road, uh, six inch thick, maintain the flow line. So, since we're talking about the driveway width, maybe I'll just suggest to the commission what, one of the thoughts about the driveway width there the curb cut opening uh, was the recognition that that previously functi functioned as an area for bus ingress and egress which which no longer isn't a primary activity there so it, it's a it, it's a wider than normal <laughs> opening and we, we at staff level thought there was an opportunity to consider altering that um, as Andre indicated their civil design work isn't complete but right now they're they're contemplating keeping that the same um, staff would suggest it might be worth looking at the, the drive opening widths on both Van Buren side as well as the the Wilson Street side of the project. So my question would be on the Van Buren side, that's the side where the Loney dock is, is that? Yes. What kind of vehicles do you anticipate going in and out of there? Are they box trucks? Are they semis? We anticipate both box trucks and semis. Uh, box trucks and 
kind of snowplow type vehicles will probably be more to the northern portion of the site, going through the roller gate and back to the surface lot area. And any vehicle that would need the recessed dock would, would be the, the bottom right corner of the building. So it seems, at least on Van Buren, I, I, I guess I could see the rationale for a wider, um, but I don't know if that would be necessary on Wilson or not. Is there any unloading at Wilson into that entrance area? We do have access into the building up there on the screen. That would be probably more of a box truck or a van type item, maybe a, a vehicle with a snowplow. Uh, it is designed so that the vehicles can pass through the building. And there, there's there's five different overhead doors on, on this building, so you would be able to connect through the building depending on how the district wants to kind of service and prep their, their vehicles. They could leave through the south door and come in through the north door. Maybe one scenario where you have a, a fleet of vehicles that are kind of getting prepped to go out and snowplow or, or what have you today. So okay. there, there is a need to have the vehicles on the south portion too. Be it not like a loading dock type capacity vehicle. All right, are these diesel vehicles? It would be a mixture of, of, of diesel and gas. <clears throat> These would be wide enough for a bus, you're saying, currently? Yeah, th that the ones off of Wilson Street certainly yeah. accommodated bus bus movements before so there's there's quite a radius on the on the entrance points as shown here um, with the redevelopment it seemed like that wasn't a likely movement that was going to be necessary any longer so uh, that seemed like an excessive width in the, the driveway opening just want to remind that we still have an a active gym space that gets utilized quite a bit both um, of all of our spaces, this is the one that gets utilized the most by the community um, in, in terms of having bus not drop off traveling basketball teams to on the road, but being able to pull in and being able to drop off right there might be a consideration for an additional consideration for keeping, keeping the width on Wilson. I would suggest to have your civil team look at the internal turning radiuses then in that area to make sure that that movement can still be accommodated with the, the redesign of that internal circulation area. Um, you, you might find those tight radiuses on your uh, on this portion of the site might not lend itself too well for that bus movement. So again, there's still some civil work they said that yet has to be completed, but that would be if that's truly going to happen, you might want to look at that, have them put that turning movement on here so you can see how that functions. Will do. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, and I think, you know, for us, we look at that for fire and EMS as well. We want to be able to get a fire truck in and out of there if, if we need be. Yes. We should actually mention that we've made that paved area wider uh, just south of the parking lines. Uh, there was a request from the district that plowing that with the large radius was difficult. You can see on the sheet above it where we had the purple lines. The, the drive directly in front of the sidewalk was about 20 feet or so. Um, you can see we're extending. You can do, take a look at where the flag pole is in that image. It's maybe 20 feet or so from that pavement. And then if you scroll down to the next image, we're a lot closer to that uh, flagpole. Yeah. So we actually widened a, a large portion of that so that the plows can more easily get a whole section rather than deal with, with the large radius uh, turn where they were kind of clipping the uh, curb cuts. So I believe we actually had an additional 15, 20 feet or so of pavement there. We, we can review the, the turn radiuses with 
with our civil teams, but we feel good about the extent of pavement there. Is that going to be a one-way movement through there, or is it planned to be two-way? It's going to be striped as one-way? I believe the intent is, is two-way. It's currently not striped for either uh, on the existing condition. But I think it functioned as a one-way, uh, primarily from the east entrance to the west entrance. There might have been some two-way movement into the gymnasium area itself, but I don't think vehicles were encouraged to go west to east in front of the school building. No, I believe they have signage in the front of entrance and exit. Yeah, I think you're right. I just don't know if the drive width at the street is conducive to two-way movement. It could be. I just can't. I can't. I haven't looked at for that. with measurement on our plans here. We've got drive lane width of around 22 feet. So depending on, on how we striped it, that should be appropriate or wide enough for either. A single or, or double lane, typically a drive lane is around 10 feet wide. Anything else you wanted to highlight, Andre, or others? That, that covers it from our perspective, but we're, we're ready to field any questions that, that we might have from the team here. All right, Commissioner Farrell. Now I'm looking at uh, sheet PC8, which is up on the screen. Yeah. So if I understand it, we're using the existing curb cuts just as a convenience as far as location and width. Is that right? That's correct, yep. Because uh, it seems like, um, you know, obviously more money, but uh, you've got a, a drive-through door on the south side, as you mentioned. It would almost seem logical to have one of those entrances lined up with that, but also it would, it would seem to make a little more better flow to have an entrance on either end of the parking lot also, so you didn't have this long dead end got to back out and do a three turn, three point turn to get out of there kind of thing. The challenge on the far west end would be grade. Uh, there's a very steep hill. Oh, is it? it doesn't show up well here, but on the, okay. uh, uh, on the far west end, it, they're really constrained by grade back to Van, or back, back to Wilson Street. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's tucked into the hill. Right oh, I see it now, okay, on, uh, on nine. Sheet nine, okay. Yep. And as the traffic backs up in that intersection also, yeah. you only need to get two or three cars in there and you'd be blocking that west driveway. Okay. And the um, exterior storage area, is that to the northwest of, of this, number four? Is that what Mike was talking yeah, about? Yeah, to the northwest corner we have the it's a surface lot. So it's current it's similar to their existing use over at River Bluff maintenance facility. It's surface lot area that has different maintenance vehicles parked. Uh, their current one is is behind chain link fencing and I think there's maybe twenty spots or so uh, striped um, in their existing facility. Here we have more of an unstriped parking. Um, kind of staging area for vehicles. There, there will be some vehicles uh, stored outside, depending on peri different periods of the year, and they'll rotate out. You know, in winter, different vehicles are, that are more plow oriented versus their their summer vehicle needs. So I mean, that's the storage area that, that in Michael's letter, he says he's going to need more details in regards to the exterior storage area. So that's, that's the area we're talking about is to the north. West yeah, of the, 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 the key is related to storage. You know, yeah. vehicle parking isn't really storage. 
But if you start having gravel piles and uh, dirt piles and outdoor storage of materials and equipment, uh, you know, that, that would be what Michael's getting at. We need to understand that more because it might not be allowed. We recognize there's an existing uh, facility on an industrial zone site that was predating our codes that are in place now. So um, that's why we really would need to understand if there's any outdoor storage other than vehicle parking that would occur out there. Are you guys yeah. gonna, <coughs> you guys stored salt out here or anything like that? We spoke with Kyle Smith, their facilities director, and they confirmed that their intent was to not store salt or gravel or mulch or any sorts of those things out on that paved area. If there would be any of that storage, it would be within the the maintenance building proper. Okay, thank you. I think that's typically what we look for is, it's one thing if it's a vehicle, but if it's stuff, um, you know, then it becomes an aesthetic thing for the neighborhood. And it's it's kind of a unique to, you know, have an uh, institutional zoning in a, in a neighborhood, but, you know, it was built, what, 1960s maybe? Well, our schools, our school sites are industrial or institutional zone property, so that's not that's not where. Uh, but this certainly has a, a mechanical feel, a little different than than your education feel. But it, it does fall under the umbrella. Um, but we're just mindful of the aesthetics and the characteristics of of the neighborhood. Um, it, you'll recognize, and I, I think it's worth discussing at least the points that were raised in the. The staff review letter highlighting about the aesthetics and the materials on the building. I don't know how the commission wants to uh, discuss or if they have considerations related to that, but I think it, it, at a minimum we have to either endorse what they have or suggest otherwise, and I think our resolution would need to be reflective of whatever action we take. <clears throat> And uh, leading off what, what Rodney was just saying with that, um, this, I mean, it, by the choice of the materials on the maintenance building itself, um, I'm struggling to see how that is synergizing with the existing gym or pretty much any school facility building at all. This almost looks like this is a one-off sort of thing. And I would have a lot of concern about plunking some something like that within a residential neighborhood that that looks like so really off character. Everyone has gotten used to a school-looking building in there, and between that gym and the existing building, they kind of blended together. Um, I was just looking at satellite views on that one or road views on that one. Um, but if I see it's, you know, a, a beige exterior, but if it has that sort of ribbing looking outside, I'm, I'm not so sure about that material for that building. I think that'll make it really stand off and, and look like it, that building doesn't belong there at all. So just for clarification, so the brick is the same, right? Right, the brick would be the same uh, or a similar match to the existing ARR gym. If the ARR gym is existing, we would look to get sample boards that match that brick pattern and color. And so how about the, okay, and how about the roofs? Uh, the roofs would be a different element. We have the standing seam roof, so it's a 12-inch kind of vertical seam We've got that, that dark brown aesthetic. So we, we looked at the different options that they have. There's a couple in their standard line. We went with the beige twos, somewhat blend away, and the the darker roof for a contrast between the two. But the, the materials on the existing roof and, and the new building are different. Right, the existing Yahara gym has a, a red coping or a flashing piece around the perimeter. So we thought the, the red roof might be a little stark to match exactly, so we went with the, the brown panel there. Okay, and you're not looking at replacing the 
the siding on the existing gym space. You're, you're looking to kind of right. match it as close as you can on the new building. Yeah, yeah the majority of the existing building is brick with the exception of the eight inches or so of flashing around the perimeter. And, and that, you're correct, we were planning on keeping that, that red flashing, but not necessarily matching that in the new building. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Anybody else have any thoughts or questions? Commissioner Farrell. Sorry, I guess it's my night tonight. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, in the staff letter, it says that we have to look at avoiding depreciating effects on surrounding property, obviously. And I'm wondering, you know, looking at what's existing and what the folks have been looking at for a long time, you know, it, it almost seems to me like it's a like a net zero gain or loss. Or, I mean, look at it, it's like it, there's been a there's been something other than a nice residential facility across the street for a long time and so I don't see where we're changing a whole lot but if you were if there was a separation of time I guess if you were to demolish that building wait five years and then want to build something new I might if I was a guy across the street I might go whoa but I'm already looking at it so I don't know that there's a huge change does that make sense to anybody <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I mean, it's been that way for, for a long time. I'm just um, hoping that the, the new building will synergize a little bit better at least. I mean, I know that on the plan it doesn't necessarily show out how, how it's going to look. Um, maybe more like a street view rendering or something like that might, might illustrate that a little bit better. Um, but to definitely get it so that it's it's closer to um, what what the gym looks like, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't look like you just added another building on there. Even though I know that they're for two different purposes, but so that it's understood that that these two things do belong together. Yeah, you're looking more at compatibility with the exterior architecture of the gym, like what was there. Okay. Right. Yeah, because I mean, I know it's not, it's, it's just not possible to, uh, like with the, with the breaking that goes up far on the gym, I know that's not possible in a regular building, um, and that, that, that's fine, but um, just so it d blends in a little bit more with uh, what folks have been used to seeing for many, many decades. Yeah. yeah. One other thing we can mention here too is we were adding a series of about nine trees on the east side there and another five along the south along Wilson. So we are adding some additional screening in, in terms of landscaping, both at the building's perimeter and also set more at the sidewalk level with the, the trees that we're adding through the site. What size trees are those two inch bald and burlapped? Is that is that the size tree you plan to start with, uh, like a two-inch caliper? Yeah, we'd start with a smaller tree, so it would, it would take time to mature. Yeah. Rodney's reading my mind. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm with with the mind of uh, trying to make these the structures match you know, trying to tie things in a little bit better. I'm wondering if there's a way to, and if I'm understanding this correctly, this metal coping, the red metal coping that is on the existing Yahara gym, if there's some way to imaginatively tie that, continue that over into the new building somehow with trying to make it fit, but I'm not exactly sure. How you would do that? I don't know if that would help, or if that would be something that could be considered. And that uh, on the the Yahara gym, that's essentially just a court facility. Is that correct? Just a basically a basketball court and restrooms, more or less. That's correct. And, and locker, locker rooms, rooms and toilet okay. rooms off of it. Yep. Okay. 
If I could also, uh, this is McLean with the UA. Um, the existing gym does have the brick that goes up to a certain point, and then above that you'll see um, an EFIF product. It's, uh, um, it's a material that's not, um, and on the school building itself, there is a brick wainscoting around the base, similar to what we're showing on the new build here. And above that, it's an EFIS product. Um, so considering that language, the slope of the existing gym, which is similar to our new build here, uh, the, the metal panel that we're proposing is a uh, substantial upgrade of a quality material versus a EFIS from what they are what they are used to seeing as an existing material. Um, so if, if we could um, consider the language, if they're used to seeing something, and, and that's a, a concern, there is a similar language in the new build with brick wrapping around the base with a different material that sits on top of that, but a better quality product with the metal panel than a ethos. When's the possibility of replacing that ethos material on that existing gym? I know that that stuff is not very good material at all, and most of it was removed from the high school. This specific ethos, we we seem to be in good good condition. We didn't have plans to replace that at, at this time. Uh, it's usually the ethos that's lower to the ground that can get dinged up and damaged by snow blowers, plows, students. So the, the ethos that's up above maybe the 10 foot line of the gym is is in, in good condition. I don't, I don't know when it was painted last or last repaired, but you can even see it's a similar beige tone. That's what I was saying to what was picked to I mean, match I don't, our metal panel. I don't have any objection to the metal panels on, on the newer facility as long, or in the newer building, as long as the, the color matching is fairly similar to it. I mean, I don't expect you to mad match that. I mean, I I think that's that's kind of a garbage coating on, on a building anyway. But I have a long history with this building. I was the the uh, facilities chair uh, of the school board when we were talking about this building many years ago. So. Um, so was I, I think, at one point. Right. Yeah. I probably <laughs> the mayor and I probably know a lot more about this building than than you might think. Has there been any discussion about having that brick veneer uh, to a different elevation, more closely to match the gym? We did look at that at one point in the design. Uh, it was at a higher level, and it, uh, working with our Findorf price estimators was at the tune of almost $200,000, and we were looking to put that towards more classroom-focused spaces uh, when we are trying to, to calculate how best the, the 50 million referendum is, is split between the eight buildings here. So at one point that was considered and um, some of the options that we're looking at keeping within the project, for instance, are the, the skylights within the cafeteria space, which were deemed by the team to be a priority versus the height of the brick on this particular building. But we also noted that the existing building here uh, had that three foot brick perimeter on the, the current gym that you can see on the screen here to the right of the the gym. That was another item we considered when we were looking to strike where that height would be. It would be more of a similar look to to what was there. But the building height is about twice as high though, right? The new building? Uh, At correct. least, yeah. yeah. It, it would be higher there is a portion of kind of screening to the back there depending on where you strike that height but certainly the the road side yeah height would, would be taller so the low side of the building would be the the wilson street side that we're looking at now yep and the gable is is running east to west Great. Anything else you want to tell us about the new buildings? Um, I, 
know if you reviewed uh, bike parking, but we also listed bike parking on, on the new set of plans here. And at, on the last sheet, we gave you the River Bluff site plan as well that came up at the last, I believe it's 10% parking, uh, bike parking spots per car parking spot. So if we go to sheet, PC08, we have it clouded in red. Yeah, right there at the, yeah, right there. So we have two U-shaped parking spots, so four vehicle, uh, four parking, bike parking spaces. I believe we required 2.7, so we rounded up to three. And then since it's a U-shaped fixture, it's an additional spot. And then if we go to the very last image, we gave the River Bluff site plan parking space. And that was to the south of the site. Um, the argument there was that we are uh, farther from the main entrance, but more where a bike pedestrian or a, a bike user would switch from their bicycle to a pedestrian mode rather than pulling them up into the drive lane that's going to be heavily trafficked by vehicles. So we have it clouded in red there on the south portion of the site. So the students would come in off of North Street, right past the district office, uh, transition, would park their bikes there, and then walk the remaining portion. It's about uh, 200 feet north to the, the bend of the sidewalk, the main entrance. Any questions about this one? This is River this Bluff. This is River Bluff. They're just showing where the position of the bikes, bike stalls are here in the bottom left hand, how it transitions away from the, the drive lane area a little bit. Didn't make the transition for yeah, building so, building. sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry. This this one right here, the bike, bike parking area in the River Bluff site. How many bikes does that account? That's sorry, 10%. I'm wondering. So how many? Wonder how many bicycle units does that accommodate? That would be five U-shaped racks. It accommodates ten parking spots for bikes. Okay. We have sixty-one stalls. So I believe the the city ordinance requires six point one. So we usually round up to seven and we provided 10 in this case, given it's a school and it's a gym component and there's ample space to the south of the site. I'm just wondering how many, does anybody have any knowledge about how many bicycles are parked there on an average school day and how much accommodation is needed considering it's younger people and that might be their mode of transportation so I don't know if that if that math is I think, it's in the, I think it's in the ballpark I know I was down there at one point counting bicycles at a couple different schools and we wish there were more um, and if there is more I'm sure they can add more racks later they used to have an entire caged-in area for bikes at the middle school. Mm -hmm. I mean, a fenced-in area, oh, really? a very large one, by by the maintenance facility on the east side of the current River Bluff site. So that dates back a little ways when right. kids rode bikes. It's hard to ride a bike when you're on your cell phone. I've seen it done. Have you? I am, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so, so I, have a, I have a question, um, and I, I apologize to the staff, I don't know how many questions I should ask. Um, how far along in the, the budget delivery, you've, you've gotten your effort in the past, how much was allocated to this project, and, and where are you at in relationship to the budget as you're contemplating? I know you've talked about the premium corrugated metal um, panels that you've selected with that vendor. I'm just kind of curious where you're falling in relationship to your budget 
that was anticipated for this site with this this project? Yeah, yeah right now, out of the 50 million roughly referendum dollars, we have five and a half million associated with this work. That would include the demolition of the existing school, all of the new pavement and civil work, and then the the new maintenance building and the Yahara uh, addition or reno renovation. So I think somewhere between three and three and a half million for just the maintenance building portion itself. You know, new footings, new landscaping, and new steel wall roof type construction. Uh, we have an estimated 250 a square foot right now, about a little over 17,000 square feet. How does that compare to what your projections were for the referendum portion of this site? If they were, I don't know if they were broken down or if you guys had somehow the estimates for the referendum were put together. I was just kind of curious how that compares to what was presented to the community overall. I believe they were broken down to that level. Let me see if I have that information over here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just kind of hung up on the, the aesthetics and I'm doing it purposely because of the abuse the city has taken for a similar facility that's actually in one of our business parks right along Williams Drive. And, and you know, this is smack dab in the middle of a residential neighborhood. So I'm, I'm only doing it to highlight uh, what we've gone through in, in situations where we contemplated something similar in an industrial park. Right now I'm seeing 5.6 million associated with all of this work is the figure I just gave. So that was uh, 1.2 million over, 1.3 million over what we had planned for this. So actually this trended almost 20, 25% higher than what we anticipated. And some of that was an additional portion of square footage. I believe we added 2,000 square feet at one point to make sure it was sized appropriately to the district's needs. Um, so that was previously planned at around 4.3 million. We're currently at 5.6 for the Ahara and maintenance building. That of course includes decisions that the district made already to include that brick wainscoting. That's not typical to some of these buildings. Their current building does not have that uh, over at River Bluff, granted it's kind of in a, it's a residential area, but a different area. That's a an eight foot line of CMU that's painted white at their existing facility. And then there's the metal panel. It's I believe a light blue above that. So this is certainly an improvement upon that as an example, granted it's a different site. I guess my question would be is is on uh, the uh, the parking lots that you're removing and you're replacing with green space and landscape. Do you have a number for that part? Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you know if, if you could invest that money into the panels of the building versus you know removing a parking lot that you may need later. I don't know what kind of shape that lot's in either, so it might need to come out regardless. Most of the surface lots are not in great shape. That's actually a, a reason that a, a large majority of what's not needed was removed. And also why we're replacing so much of the pavement, like the area to the south is all completely new just because it was not in the best condition, um, was needed to be updated. And with the, the new site plan, it certainly warranted a new layout as well. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of gathered that, and I assume that all the other buildings you're probably, you know, running into higher material costs as well. So I'm guessing you're not under budget in any of the other ones. Uh, across the board, yeah, that's true. There, there's some that have been higher and some lower, but uh, industry-wide, we're certainly facing some increases in, in prices that we've never seen before, in, in the tune of 15 to 20 percent in some instances. Just supply chain shortages, labor shortages. It's, it's always a, a tricky 
um, component when we plan these referendums that the, the dollar amounts tend to change even within three years. And you can see what has already happened with interest rates and all, all of those factors that affect all of our projects. So when this passed in uh, November of 2022, I believe we still have lasting effects from all of our, all of those things. And that is budgeted within what, what Findorf has, has planned. They usually plan between three and 5% inflation in those plans. Recently, those have ticked higher. Yeah, we've certainly experienced that on, well, not only buildings, but vehicles and everything else as well. So I, I certainly understand that. Um, any other questions or thoughts or suggestions from commissioners? Go ahead. Yeah, I just want some clarification on, on something just for my own curiosity. I believe when you were talking about the panels, you said there were three grades of panel and that you had uh, budgeted this on the best. Can you tell me what the difference is in um, energy efficiency and life expectancy or anything like that between the, what would it be better and best? The two top, the middle grade and the top grade. Sure, so there wouldn't be any change in energy efficiency. That's all happening behind the metal panel. Okay. But really the good, better, best for the um, architectural line of metal panels is aesthetics. The, okay. the main one is you're hiding your fasteners. So some people don't like to see the, the fasteners running up the building, so they have a concealed fastener example. What you might see more in like a marina setting is the non-concealed fasteners on a metal building like this. Um, we're using the what they call their A panel series versus their R panel. The A panel allows for that V groove to hide the, the fasteners, whereas your typical ribbed panel is a 12 inch panel that has kind of three sub uh, girts in it to give it rigidity, but it, it looks a little bit more um, industrial, or the word I used was kind of marinas tend to use that quite a bit. So, this is a, an upgrade to that. Okay. metal panel it's their architectural finish line okay and and what is the cost differential I mean just to hide fasteners <laughs> I get it I would like to hide fasteners but what is, what is the cost differential it, it can vary from manufacturer we would usually estimate between 10 and 20 percent that sort of it, it's it's a different profile too so while it's an extruded panel it's it's more of an inverted V versus a U-shaped. Okay. All right, thank you. I think one of our sheets, I think it was sheet five, had a picture of that panel uh, with materials. And what was the life expectancy on the building? Uh, life expectancy for that sort of a finish would be between 30 and 50 years. Okay. And you think you'll get that much left on the, the gym building as well? For the EPA system, we should. Brick really has, you know, 150 plus year as long as you tuck point it and maintain it. Um, the the EPA system usually needs some some painting. So at the top of the image there, you can see the it's kind of small, but the, the A panel. Their description reads: it's a a decorative wall design, attractive shadow pattern, and semi-concealed fasteners. It offers 36 inches of coverage in the panel that has 12 inch ribs. So you can see in the V there is where the, the fasteners would, would connect the panels. Uh, if we didn't go with that profile, it would be more like the profile on the right, which is what's being used on the roof. It's kind of a, a U shape that has a major rib every 12 inches, and then there's some added rigidity ribs every three inches. And the fasteners would be exposed on that, which always have a tendency to rest first before anything else. Or you can see the paint coming off of them on the other.
yeah, paint and, and rust lines that tend to form from, from water that runs down the building. So this architectural series panel helps avoid some of those issues. <clears throat> Anybody else have any? Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Farrell. I guess back to the original question. Was this another one where the adjacent property owners were notified? No. 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 Again, this isn't a conditional use. So this, uh, this is not a, a public hearing type invitation. It's open to the public, but it's not directly mailed to anyone. Sure. We didn't, the staff didn't hear from any adjacent owners about this? No. We okay. seldom do unless they um are invited okay. directly yeah and there there might be a, like a few across the street and on the kind of the back side of the building you're separated by the fields so those homes are back in a distance and you know and on the other side of uh, wilson would be the church that we just discussed and then you'd have to go up the hill to get to the high school so there's you know there's some apartments up there but i, I don't even know if they could see down the hill there they used to sled on that hill before they put the gym on there. It used to be real popular. Huh? Um, I don't know if it still is or not, but you have to stop a little quicker than you used to. Yeah, they, they still sl toboggan there, but they, they used to sled this hill here too um, on the back of the gym. So. The, the other thing, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the proposed uh, you know, exterior and I'm looking at the street view of the gym it seems to me like the biggest thing jumps out of the gym is the red and, and if you just simply paint that red a dark brown then that's the roof of the proposed uh, maintenance building that I don't know that driving by real quick you would notice a huge difference so it could just be as simple as repainting that anywhere there's red the fascia and the trim and call it a day and I think it matches pretty close. care what direction it goes just as long as they kind of look together like they should be together but yeah I think that's that's a good suggestion for that My biggest concern on it is uh, with the residents on North Van Buren and looking at that, um, looking at that gable side on. Where, you know, it's just something like, like Rodney alludes to, um, we don't want to get stuck in that situation again of having to listen to an ugly building being put in somewhere. Well, yeah, it would especially be, since this is residential, I mean, to the point that's also what I was saying, this is a very uh, industrial looking architecture or, you know, industrial looking building that I don't know how much you do to it it's I suppose there are some things you could do to it with unlimited <laughs> the Taj Mahal of yeah. maintenance facilities or something but uh, yeah residents will accept schools as being in their area but a warehouse is a top sell mm -hmm. 
and it could impact value for those homeowners. So I, I guess my question would be to the construction team, is there anything else you think you could do to, you know, address some of the concerns that you've heard? So if we switch to page PC10, it's their landscaping plan. Uh, just counted the trees along that east side. We have 20 trees on that east side that range between medium and, and large, um, you know, canopies of, of 20 to upwards of 30, 35 feet. Uh, the, the circle portion of the drive is where we have the heaviest amount of screening. Um, we've got six or seven trees along that, that curve yep, right there. At the corner of the property, we have a couple of trees screening from that edge. And then we have one tree just to the south of the, the, yep, the curb cut in. Um, so we, we took a look at, at some of these and we added some additional trees and mulching areas. We didn't have as, as many plants along the, the curb to the north to into the roller gate section. And then we added a tree just south of the kind of the L shape within that green space by the second drive lane into the building. It's more of an ornamental tree, so just above the parking stripes to the south. Yep, right there. So we added a tree there that's more of a decorative ornamental type fixture. We kind of anticipate there might be a, a bench or a picnic table out there that the staff could, could go out into that green space as opposed to just a, a sea of grass in front of that building. You know, what is the, the timeline on this project? Uh, we've got groundbreaking set in around March of 2024. We've got about a month left to the end of construction documents and we'll be out to the, the street to bid in January and February of 2024. And then the end of construction we have slotted to be uh, 2025 and around October, September. So that was March of 24 to October of 25 is the construction timeline. I mean, I'll be blunt with the landscaping and that 25 mature trees are going to benefit your property values and not the neighbor's property values. Yeah. Aesthetic is my primary concern here. So I guess what I'm hearing is really your your solution for the aesthetic is really the, the landscape. You, you don't think there's really anything you can do for the materials or the building itself. As far as the materials of the building, now the ratio of brick versus metal panel is something to play with if we set aside the cost for a moment. Um, we did talk about this future fence the district uh, plans to install in the back. Um, now, if the district were willing to take some of the brick associated towards the back side and shift it around to the front and kind of reallocate where the quantity of brick goes rather than changing the quantity, we wouldn't necessarily be looking at a cost difference per se. Uh, but you would be moving some of that nicer brick material towards the front uh, or what's more visible, especially after that future fence is installed. Um, with something like that idea help with the, the desire uh, for this residential area? So how high do you think the brick would go then on Wilson? <coughs> well, we could we could look at it, it uh, going up to the window head would be the next um, probably line that would make sense. Um, you know, we want to we want to look at uh, adjacencies of of elements on the building to make sure that there's there's some. Um, 
scale and sense to where it stops and starts. So, so I look at the commissioners, see if you think that's a step in the right direction, um, or do you think there's more that can be done? I mean, my initial thought was, is there anything more that can be done with the windows? They, you know, I'm sure they're strategically located, but they, I don't know if that's for functionality or aesthetics. They seem small when you look at the overall size of the building. Um, is there an opportunity there? Yeah, w window size is, is something that could be uh, looked at as well. Some of the, the windows in the smaller portion of the building are uh, associated with those offices. And then the windows um, on the larger portion is more of that open area, uh, open function storage and other functions for the maintenance building. Uh, obviously you can go higher, but it would be more for the exterior aesthetic, which Fine, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, there's set between a height of three feet and seven foot four, which is kind of the, the viewing line of your, your average person to, to see out the window. And so what Clayton said, they were really set to match the office portion, but well, you could go higher and maybe match the line of the overhead door or somewhere between that seven foot four and 12 feet. Um, and there's, there's energy code type items to consider there. The, the more glass you have, the less it, it performs uh, thermally. Uh, but certainly it would allow us for some more daylight into the space. I prefer to see the windows up higher on, on the warehouse section of it. That would also prevent um, from a security point any access that would be in it or anybody looking in your windows either. My issue mostly is on, on the on the gable side of it. You're gonna have like 20 feet of, of metal unbroken. I mean, except for your fastener covers. Um, to, I mean, when, when you have that kind of situation, that just screams warehouse at me. Not to mention the overhead doors, which I understand are necessary, but um, just to have that gigantic space of, of unbroken metal seems what like would, uh, <clears throat> what would happen if you were to carry the uh, fascia that's on the lower building on the office building uh, carry that line on across the uh, larger storage area and across that uh, end, end of the building also that would break up those large expansive panels. It would be similar to what the other building has on it as far as a band uh, on, on the existing building. There's a band there. It would kind of tie those two together. And, and if you wanted to change the color of the band on the existing building, it looks like paint would do that to match this. What do people think about that? I'm just, I'm trying to get, because it, like uh, Phil said, this is not Taj Mahal, it is a storage building. We don't want to mess with the neighborhood as far as doing anything that they perceive downgrades their area. But it seems like we could dress this up just a little bit and be fine. I think Commissioner Robinson's idea is a step in the right direction. I think at least something to to break up that that big expanse of metal I think will be an improvement overall. Oh and I think if you add the brick oops, we got a feedback there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that the window idea across the building is definitely good and then maybe increasing some of the brick uh, from the back that's going to be fenced eventually anyway um, could go a long way to make it look 
like I'll say a gentler building, um, you know, settling into that residential neighborhood rather than looking like a warehouse. Yeah, I, I, I think you might have an opportunity on the, the end of the building that's facing the hill too. I, I don't know if anyone's really going to see much of that, but I think what we're trying to do is give you guys some constructive feedback and I'm wondering if it's too much to ask if, if you could come back to a future meeting and maybe um, give us some renderings of what those options might look like because you know, certainly want to respect your timeline. Um, you know, we meet monthly. Is, is that something you think you could you could bring us in December? Current timeline that we had set was December eighth for final drawing, so that would be getting a little tight on our side. I don't know if what your thoughts are on on that timeline, or if it would be a, a conditional approval that we could, you know, proceed with the drawings and and, and meet whatever conditional um, points that you could that use, you give us. Uh, I think the, the line that we were just talking about would, would likely be a paint strip line, which we've seen incorporated into some of these buildings as kind of an accent line. The 27th or 29th? Or 30th? I can't do the 27th. I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah, only the 29th. Or the 30th. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're just checking calendars here to see if maybe we could sneak in another meeting before then so we could honor your timeline but really take another uh, look at it. And I think, you know, a, a street view would be helpful too. This is kind of an aerial, you know, street view from, you know, different sides of the building. I don't know if you have the technology that's capable of producing that. Um, something that we can maybe visualize it a little bit more because the last thing we want to do is you know is, is have folks out in the community saying well why did you do that and, and not make them do more and I think what I'm hearing from the group is that they're, they're trying to work with you to work toward the approval but to do more um, so you could have a special meeting the week earlier the week yeah. of the fourth yeah, so we're, I don't that helps. We're, we're trying to see if we could schedule a meeting. You said you had to have approval by December 8th. 8th? December 8th, yeah. So yeah. The week of the yeah, our next meeting would be on the 11th. Is, is that really going to put you in a pinch? I mean, it's one business day later. Could we, um, could we work? with Rodney to schedule uh, this as soon as possible. And, you know, I, I want to come back to the team with, with some ideas. Um, we are in a time crunch, but I understand the situation. We, we might just have to make some revisions after uh, documents are done. Um, but uh, is this something that I can work directly um, with Rodney to schedule, see what our options are for, for scheduling? Certainly. Sure, yeah, yep, we can do that. Um, Rodney certainly has access to my schedule and we can put something out to the commissioners. It's going to be a, a little tricky because of the holidays, but, you know, we certainly would make an effort to try to, I mean, it would just be the one item. I don't anticipate it would take that long because we've done most of the heavy lifting tonight anyway. It's just an opportunity to see what you guys can can come up with because I think you know I think there's a sense that we we want to approve it but we want to approve something that you know we can be happy with and we can certainly um, you know get support from the community to you know to be proud of the building and and I think you guys certainly have put in a lot of work to get to this point so we appreciate that as well um, I think you know we're just want to get it so we can you know get it over the finish line for you um, is anybody going to be taking any time off for a while or go ahead? Well, I was going to say just real quick, uh, what, you know, when you talk about street level elevations, what would be really helpful, I think, too, to help visualize things is to incorporate the landscape plan in those. You know, if you look at PC3, it's a barren lot. And so, you know, 
using your CAD to plop some trees, look at what it's going to look like from the street with the trees and the landscape would be helpful. Yeah, we often see that on, on other projects that come through here. So if, if you guys have the ability to, to do that, I think that would be really helpful to, to kind of give a, I don't know what they even call it, it's like a 3D CAD is what I would call it, but I think you guys are probably familiar with that. Um, you know, of all angles of the building, you know, maybe you can show the back with the fence, the back with and without the brick, things like that, so we can at least, you know, understand, you know, what it what it'll actually look like. But uh, certainly appreciate you answering the questions and working with us to, you know, try to address this because I know the district has, you know, put a lot of thought and time and effort in, in getting getting to this point. So we, you know, we certainly want to, you know get you to the point where you can hit your schedule and get this thing built before the price goes up even more <laughs> no i appreciate that but um i just want and i know mclean's been taking a lot of notes uh, so i'm not even worried about if my notes in my head are are accurate because i know that um, we'll have written notes but just to kind of summarize from for myself and being part of the core team Looking at aesthetics, making sure the two, the gym and the and the maintenance facility match. That's a that's a priority. Looking at um, perhaps some painted banding to go around to break up the elevation, particularly on the gable side, and then also reallocating so we stay within budget the brick on the back side and maybe on the side that's facing the gym and reallocated to the Van Buren and Wilson sides. The, those were kind of the three big takeaways that I've heard, right? Yeah. Sounds mm -hmm. yep, I think the one other was the windows. If we can just take a look at that, if there's anything we can do. And the windows, all right. I'm just thinking about that in terms of, and there's an understanding that if we reallocate the brick, that means there's going to be more metal Go, potentially going all the way to the ground on those back sides. Okay. No, I appreciate I appreciate the feedback. Okay. Anything so, else? Otherwise, you know, we don't have to take any action, or we can move to postpone, or whatever you think the appropriate motion would be at this point. Do you have a postpone to to the next scheduled meeting or the the meeting when we can get information from the applicant okay. and if that's a special meeting we'd certainly try to accommodate them I would be my guess okay somebody want to make that motion I'll move to postpone until uh, a med uh, another meeting can be rescheduled all right second by Bradford mm -hmm. any discussion on that uh, thank you all again for being here tonight all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed None opposed. Are there any future agenda items? This Thank item you. is top of center. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's, right? Let's focus on we'll, that one we'll first. We'll focus on this one, uh, and then we'll see what else comes up in a regular meeting next month. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. Motion by Schumacher, second by Caravello. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>